I'm going to write down the stuff that we know from last time. And so I'll have a page of stuff that we can refer back and forth to. And let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. There we go. And so today is September already. Can you believe it? So you guys keep filling in. Okay, I don't want anybody to see that. Let's go down. Minimize. Working. So what I'm going to put on here are our definitions of our six tree functions based upon the sides of a right triangle. And then we went through those special values for you to know. I'm going to make that table down again because we're going to refer to it a lot today. So if you have that written somewhere else, you don't have to write this down again, but you might want to be able to pull it out so that you can see it as we talk today. And then I'll ask if you have homework questions. Speaking of homework, one of the web work questions on the current assignment from chapter two has a big warning. There's something wrong with this problem. I've tried it. There's nothing wrong with the problem. So just ignore the warning sign. Nothing blows up on you. There's just not enough problems from, from which to choose. So I've got to leave that one on there. Um, there's nothing wrong with the problem. It's just got a, a warning message on it. It's, I think, problem four from the section 2.2 homework. So don't get freaked out by the warning. Continue the problem as normal. So from last time, we had our trig functions based upon the relationship between sides of a right triangle. So if I draw my right triangle like this, and put my angle as the base angle. Then this side is called the opposite side. This side is called the adjacent side. And then of course, this is the hypotenuse. Still with the Pythagorean relationship that leg squared plus leg squared is hypotenuse squared. So if you're missing any one of these numbers, you use that equation to find the, the missing value. Maybe still a little bit bigger. So if we have that, our six trig functions look like the sine of that angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine of that angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And then the tangent of that angle is the opposite over the adjacent. When I flip these relationships over, I form in order here, the cosecant of angle theta, hypotenuse over opposite. Secant of angle theta is hypotenuse over adjacent. And cotangent of angle theta is adjacent over opposite. We also define these in terms of coordinates in the plane and use the <laughs> coordinates x, y, and the hypotenuse as r. Um, so there's that relationship there. If we line up the triangle like that, the adjacent side would be the x, and the opposite side would be the r, given that we line the triangle with its vertex angle at the origin. Then the special values that we'll need to know are at zero degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. Those are our reference angles that we know the value that we can determine the values of the six trig functions. Uh, and then today I'll show you how to look at um, non-acute angles and use those six angles 
five angles and find the values of trig functions of non acute angles. Or does that still sound like I was speaking like Charlie Brown's teacher? We all speak trig in here. So I'm going to reproduce that table. So some values to know. Right, all capital letters means that I'm yelling. So I'm yelling at you to know these. You need to know the values of the trig functions at zero degrees. Pi, oops, no pies yet. What do I want, 30 degrees? 30 degrees, 45 degrees. 60 degrees and 90 degrees. So the next column is going to be the sine of those angles. The sine, remember, starts 0, 1 half, square to 2 over 2, square to 3 over 2, and 1. Remember, the sine was the, uh, in terms of coordinate uh, trig, the sine was y value over r. So if we fix r, and as the angles grow, so does y. So that reflects that the sine values grow from 0 to, to 1 as we climb through those reference angles. And now the cosine values go opposite. If you can remember those, just write them opposite. 0, 1 half, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, and then 1. Then if you know those, the tangent of angle theta can be remembered as the values in that first column divided by the values in the second column. And that's why I always list the sign first, even though it represents the y coordinate. Because now if I divide the left, left column by the right column here, zero divided by one, will give me zero, the tangent of zero degrees is zero. One half divided by the square root of three over two is one divided by the square root of three. But if you rationalize that, you will get the square root of three over three. Here, both sine and cosine are the same. So when I form this ratio, that will simplify to one. <laughs> square root of three divided by two, divided by one half. If you think about flipping and multiplying by the one half, the twos will cancel. Tangent of 60 degrees simplifies to the square root of three. And then one divided by zero is not even defined. So the tangent at a right angle is not defined. Then you can find the other ones using the, um, fact that the cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine, the secant is the reciprocal of the cosine, and the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent. So let me write these up here. That's one over the sine of angle theta. That's one over the secant of angle theta. And that's one over the tangent. So I'm not gonna put those in the table. It makes the table too big. If you can remember that, then you will have healthy, happy, and productive lives. Unless you have this criminal element to you. I can't beat that out of you. Now, at this point, I'll take homework questions. Anything about any of the web works, past, present, and future? Yes, sir. Uh, I have a question I have there. So okay. It says the uh, SCC is. Uh, I meant to say one over cosine. Thank you for catching that. Yes, 
Yes, sir. I couldn't figure out this one, but once you define the co function along with the degree of cosine of t minus five. Okay. So remember our co function identities. I kind of used them when I made this table that the sine and cosine take on the same values, but 90 degrees away from one another. That's why uh, with sine is zero at zero degrees, but the cosine is zero at 90 degrees. Same value, but 90 degrees away from each other. Um, and that's what the co-function identities say. They say that um, the cosine of any angle will always be the same as the sine of 90 degrees minus that angle and vice versa. I can write the same thing and swap places with sine and cosine. The um, tangent and cotangent are co-functions. So the next one says that the tangent of any angle is the same as the cotangent of 90 degrees minus the angle. And then finally, secant and cosecant. The secant of any angle is the same as the cosecant of 90 minus that angle. So the one that was on web work looks something like given the cosine, was it t minus five? Cosine of t minus five, write that in terms of its co-function which is the sine. And then you have to fill in this blank right here with the correct information. I think you also had to fill in the sine, had to recognize that the sine was its co-function. Okay, so this had to be done first in the first blank. So what I'm gonna do is literally use T minus five as the A. So what goes in this parentheses here is gonna be 90 minus the expression T minus five. And then we'll simplify it just a nudge. You send that minus sign through the parentheses and you get 90 minus T plus five. And you can add those numbers together and get 95 minus T. And that's what you enter right here. That's the co-function relationship. They don't have to be numerical angles. They can be whatever expression representing the angle. Okay. Find the cosine, given that sine is five over 13 and the particular angle is in quadrant two. So let's do that homework problem. Find the cosine if sine is five over 13 and the angle is in quadrant two. So sine of the angle is five over 13 and the angle is in quadrant two. Find the cosine of that angle. Okay, so the fact that the angle is in quadrant two allows me to draw my right triangle, here's the origin. There's the y-axis, there's the x-axis. So I'm gonna draw my triangle so that it goes back in the x direction, up in the y direction, like that. And then remember, it's covered up, but remember the sign can be thought as the ratio of two sides of this triangle. Which two sides? 
opposite over hypotenuse. So I can label the opposite side as five. And that's okay because the y's are increasing, y's positive. So that's a positive five. The hypotenuse is going to be the 13. Now, x is going to be negative there, but let's find the x using the Pythagorean theorem. That it will be 12. This is a 5, 12, 13 triangle, but just in case you didn't know that, um, let me label that as an x and say that x squared plus 5 squared is 13 squared. So x squared plus 25 is 169. You do this Pythagorean theorem so many times and then the squares of numbers are kind of stuck in your head. So 13 squared is one of those I do a lot. X squared, take 25 away from 169 and you get 144. Do you recognize the square root of 144? That will be 12. But look at the triangle, it's backwards. It's going back in the negative X direction. So you're gonna use X as negative 12. OK? And we need that negative 12 because the cosine of that particular angle is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is negative 12. And the cosine of angle theta here will be negative 12 over 13. Because we're going back, x is, uh, it says, um, Theta is in quadrant two, so X goes back to get into quadrant two. Where's quadrant two? X goes back, Y goes up to get us in quadrant two. And then we had that little saying that all students take calculus. Did we do that in here? Yes. All of the trig functions are positive in quadrant one. S and one over S, so sine and one over sine are positive in quadrant two. Tangent and one over tangent are positive in quadrant three. And then cosine and one over cosine are positive in quadrant four. And then the other trig functions are negative. Okay. So let me put that up here. All students take calculus, tells us where they're positive and where they're not. So in quadrant two, only the sine and one over sine is positive here. So that's another reminder to make cosine a negative number given that information. Okay. Anybody else have any web work questions? We're all good? Okay, and then in section 2.3, we're going to look at finding the values of our trig functions when the angle is not acute. Oops, I guess that's section 2.2. I'm kind of off on my numbers. Big functions of non-acute angles. So the acute angles are the ones in the first quadrant, measures between zero and 90. I call those reference angles, well, kind of there's a broader category of reference angles. Uh, any angle can be formed by taking a ray and rotating it either counterclockwise about the origin, in which case you make positive angles. If you rotate that ray clockwise around the origin, you make negative angles. The angle formed between the terminal side of that rotated ray 
and the closest x axis will be called the reference angle. So reference angles are those angles made by the terminal side of an angle theta with the nearest x-axis, either the positive x-axis or the negative x-axis. So every quadrant one angle is a reference angle, but let me draw you angles in quadrant two, three, and four. If we're in quadrant two, no matter which way we wrap it around, but let's look at an angle wrapped this way. If I put the terminal side of an angle here and call this angle theta, then this angle in here is its reference angle. I'm going to denote the reference angles as theta prime. So this angle in here is the reference angle. And even if we rotate the ray this way, we get a negative angle, still put it in quadrant two, but if this is angle theta, then this is still angle theta prime. So in this case, theta is a positive angle. In this case, theta is a negative angle. Theta prime, the reference angle, is always positive. It's just going to be the non-directed measure between the terminal side of the angle and the nearest x-axis. So theta prime is always positive. Now let me draw you the angle in quadrant three. So I have a quadrant three angle, much works the same way. If this is the terminal side of an angle in quadrant three and it's a positive angle, then theta prime is this angle made right here. If I go with wrapping that angle in the other direction, if this is theta, theta, then this is theta prime. Now let's do the same thing in the quadrant four. In quadrant four, so I can wrap the angle all the way around in the positive direct direction and have theta look like that. But then theta prime is this distance right here. If theta is wrapped negative to get to there. Then that is itself a reference angle if you discard the sign, throw away the <coughs> minus. So if you've got a negative acute angle in quadrant four, then you just throw the sign away and that's the reference angle. <coughs> 
Otherwise, you do what this says here. Suppose I have this positive angle, an example of an angle that is in quadrant two would be 150 degrees. Agree? Because what's the straight angle make? 180. So that red reference angle, if this theta is 150 degrees, that's just how much short that falls from the 180 degrees. So that's just 30 degrees. So in other words, if I have a quadrant two positive angle, I just take that angle and I subtract it from 180. So here, theta prime is equal to 180 degrees minus theta. Now, if I've formed angle theta in quadrant two by going around a circle several times and then landing in quadrant two, I have to peel off several uh, uh, 360s until I get this angle to be a number smaller than 180 degrees, and then I subtract it from 180. So sometimes you have to take out several multiples of 360 degrees. All right, so if I have, say, for instance, this angle, a negative number, so it's got to be a number that's negative, but bigger or smaller than, I guess, in magnitude, smaller than negative 180, for example, negative uh, 200 degrees. An example of an angle that's negative in quadrant two would be negative 200 degrees. What would its reference angle be? How far is negative 200 degrees away from the nearest x-axis? 20 degrees, right? So you can just take the angle in magnitude, in absolute value, and take away 180, okay? So if you've got a negative angle, take away its sign, and then subtract 180 to get theta prime. I should have written that in red. Oh well, too late now. Okay. okay, so now let's look in quadrant three. An example of an angle in quadrant three would be something like 200 degrees. So how far away is 200 degree angle from the nearest x-axis? 20, so you just take angle minus 180 to get reference angle. Theta prime is equal to angle minus 180 degrees. But if I wrap it into quadrant three in a negative manner, let me think of an angle that looks like that. How about negative 100 degrees? So my angle went negative into quadrant three, negative 100 degrees. <coughs> so is it clear that it's 80 degrees away? So what did I just do? I did 180 minus the absolute value of the angle. So theta prime here is 180 minus the absolute value of the angle. Can you give me an example of an angle that is in quadrant four with positive measure? 300 degrees would be back in here. Yes, sir. So I have a question. Um, there's a rotating angles in the reference angle. Is uh -huh. it always in correspondence to the x-axis? Correct, okay. correct. So 300 degrees would be an example drawn like that. The nearest x-axis we're going to use in that case is 360 degrees. So the reference angle would be 360 minus the 300 degrees. So in this case, theta prime is going to be 360 degrees minus theta. If I have a negative angle and it's already acute, I just take its absolute value. And that's, so theta prime is just the absolute value of that angle. So the tricky part is when you have a number bigger than 360 degrees as your angle, 
But then all you're going to do is start taking 360s out of there until you get one of these cases. Remembering this isn't as important as maybe drawing the picture and then letting your common sense take over to figure out what the reference angle is instead of trying to memorize these four, six little formulas. Let's draw a picture of where your angle is. Okay. So in our example, let's find the reference angle four, and let me give you several, several of them. All right, let's go with 210 degrees. What I want you to do is see if you can convince yourself where the terminal side of an angle of measure 210 degrees is and then draw your little picture and see if you can figure out the distance between that angle and the X axis closest to it. In which quadrant is the angle of measure 210 degrees? Quadrant three, because it's bigger than 180 degrees, right? Zero degrees, then a right angle is 90 degrees. Straight line, negative x axis is 180 degrees. What's the measure of an angle that goes down to the negative y axis? 270, and then back to 360. So if you remember the zero, 90, 180, 270, then you can fit the angle in the appropriate quadrant. So 210 degrees is in quadrant three. So it's gonna look like this. And so this piece right here is theta prime. So how far is 210 degrees from that angle measurement? 30, 210 minus 180. Okay, let's go with an angle of measure. Four hundred degrees. Where is the terminal side of an angle of measure four hundred degrees? It's in quadrant one, isn't it? If I go all the way from the positive x axis all the way around the circle, that's 360 degrees. So I need to go 40 degrees more. Do you agree that that 40 degrees is going to be your reference angle? You just peel off that 360 degrees and you've got your reference angle. So this one's in quadrant one. Going 360 degrees and then 40 degrees more. So theta prime is 400 minus 360 degrees. <coughs> theta prime is 40 degrees. Let's see if I can fit another one on here. How about if I have an angle of measure 780 degrees, but negative, a negative 780 degrees.
So let's start drawing this angle. We're at the positive x-axis. We go all the way around backwards, so we're at negative 360 degrees. I go another lap, 360 plus 360 is 720. So I've made negative 720 degrees. That means I need to go how much further? 60 degrees. So which quadrant am I in? Quadrant four. Quadrant four. So here's how we make that angle on paper. I got to go backwards. So that's negative 360 to here. Another 360 puts us at negative 720. And then 60 more gives you the angle of negative 780. So negative 360 plus negative 360 plus, so that's 720 plus a negative 60 gives you the negative 780. So it corresponds to this angle, theta prime, which is how big? 60 degrees. So it's this little angle here, but in absolute value. So now the idea is going to be this. If I have this angle, for instance, and I draw a right triangle in here, and I want to find the sine and cosine of this angle, these angles pass through ordered pairs in the xy plane. And so they're going to be symmetric with all of the ones that are in our first quadrant, all of our acute angles. In other words, they'll have the same ordered pairs. The only thing that's going to be off is plus and minus signs on the x and y coordinates. So if you know the value of the trig function at the reference angle, then that's the value of the trig function at the obtuse angle, okay? So I'm gonna write that down. So for instance, the sine of, the sine if theta, is not acute, then the sine of that angle theta is equal to the sine of angle theta prime with the appropriate plus or minus here, according to, to the quadrant of angle theta. And the same is true for all of our trig functions. <clears throat> if our non acute angle has a reference angle that is one of the ones in that table that we constructed of common angles, then all we got to do is whip out that number and put the appropriate sign on it, plus or minus, depending on what quadrant, quad, quadrant we're in. So in my last example, I had a couple of reference angles that did lie in our table. Let me Look at our angles back here. Down. See, this one had a reference angle of 30 degrees. That's one of the angles in our table. This had a reference angle of 60 degrees. So I should be able to find the values of the six trig functions of 210 degrees. Let's do that now. Let's find the values of all six trig functions of 210 degrees. State 
the value of all of, of, give me an of here, of all six trig functions of 210 degrees. And so we will remember that this is, now this angle is in quadrant three. We did that up here, we drew that angle. That angle is in quadrant three with 30 degrees as its reference angle. So the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent of 30 degrees is going to be the same as those six values of 210 degrees, give or take the plus and minus. Okay, so let's write that down. That the sine of 210 degrees is going to be the same as the sine of 30 degrees and then I'm going to leave a blank here. Cosine of 210 degrees is going to be the same as the cosine of 30 degrees. And then tangent of 210 degrees is going to be the same as the tangent of 30 degrees. I'm not going to write the other three down. We'll just go from there for those. In quadrant three, which of these three trig functions are going to be positive? Only the tangent. The other two are going to be negative. So in the first two squiggly blanks there, we're going to put a minus sign. In the last blank, I'll just leave it empty. So in quadrant three, tangent is the only one positive. So we're going to put a minus sign, minus sign, and that's a positive sign. If you want to put a positive, you can just to remind us that we checked that. Now we've got to go back and remember these values. Well, I'll help you remember by showing you the table of values. Eventually this table of values has to be in your head. So looking at that table, the second line has the 30 degree values in it. The sine of 30 degrees is a half. So the sine of 210 degrees is negative one half. Read across that row, the cosine of 30 degrees is square root of three over two. So the cosine of 210 degrees is negative square root of three divided by two. You don't need the table to get the next value if you remember that the tangent of any angle is the sine divided by the cosine. So if I take negative one half and divide it by negative square root of three over two, one thing I see is that a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So that spits that out. Then I know when I divide one fraction by another, I take the one on the bottom and I flip it over and multiply. And so when I do that, I get negative one half times two over negative square root of three. The negatives and the twos cancel and we get one over root three. But then the values in the table have all been rationalized. And so we multiply top and bottom of that by square root of three. So I get a square root of three on top and a positive three on the bottom. So that's square root of three divided by three. Are you with me to there? Now we're going to flip them over and call them the cosecant, secant, and cotangent. 
So the cosecant of 210 degrees is negative two, one over the sign. The secant of 210 degrees, we flip over the cosine. Cosine was negative square root of three over two. So here we get negative two over the square root of three. But let's go ahead and get in the habit of rationalizing these uh, known numbers. Let's multiply top and bottom by the square root of three. And so we get negative two square root of three over three. And then the last one is the reciprocal of the tangent. That one is the cotangent. So we're gonna take uh, this and flip it over. I'm gonna take it from here and flip it over. And so we just get the square root of three over one. And it's positive because it's one over the tangent. You follow what I'm doing? Kind of a memorized game after a while. Okay, so let's kind of do a whole bunch of them. I'm gonna put my table away for now. I'm gonna give you a whole bunch of them and we're gonna make this kind of a pretend pop quiz. I'm going to write them down. You're going to see if you can do them. And then I'll just charge you a dollar for each one you miss. Okay? I'll put my Venmo account so you can send me the dollars as you sit there. Just to put a little pressure on you. Otherwise, you'll just do this nonchalantly. You can have your little table written in front of you. I want to see if you can find the values of each of the following. These are gonna be exact values. They're gonna have reference angles from your table that I ask you to memorize. So find exact values. So the first one, I want you to find the cosine of negative 150 degrees. The second one, the tangent of 405 degrees. The third one, the secant of 600 degrees. The fourth one, the cotangent of negative 225 degrees. Let's just try those four. And you mark it, set, go.
Yeah, go ahead and get used to rationalizing when it's sort of pretty much the ones in the thing. Rationalize your denominators. If your denominator is just a square root of two or a square root of three, they're really easy to rationalize. I'm looking at this as a money making opportunity. No pressure on you. It's probably close to 100 people in here, so about half of you missed one. You're rolling some serious bucks today. But I'm thinking I probably wouldn't get a lot of line out of this. Not that cheap stuff you guys would possibly buy. <laughs> I don't want that wine with bubbles in it. Are we ready? Not yet? Not yet? You just want me to sit in and stretch a little bit longer? If you don't want to give up money, I can always teach you kind of the way football coaches teach. Now I went to practice the other day and somebody made a mistake and the coach grabs him and collars expletives at him. I just bleep and bleep told you, blah, 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 blah. can you want me to do that? I can fill in the bleep and bleep, so it's pretty good. <laughs> I get some pretty stale coffee breath going in your face. That help you learn faster? <laughs> I couldn't possibly do it to somebody who's Tiny as you. <laughs> Maybe because you'd probably snag me back, wouldn't you? <laughs> okay, so let's see. I'm going to draw an angle of measure negative 150 degrees. So first I'll do it with my arm. We're going to go negative. So this goes to negative 90. A little bit back here in quadrant three, but not all the way through quadrant three, I should hit a negative 150 degrees. Agree that that's a quadrant three angle because it's not quite negative 180. Right, so if I'm going backwards at zero, negative 90, negative 180. And so negative 150 should be in here somewhere. So it's quadrant three. Is the cosine gonna be a positive number or a negative number in quadrant three? So there we go, we're playing for partial credit. Now we're gonna find the reference angle. It's not quite negative 180. How far off is this from negative 180? 30 degrees. So 30 degrees is my reference angle. So now I'm going to have that value memorized or look at our table, but the or part is going to be eliminated soon. Cosine of 30 degrees is square root of three over two. So this answer here is negative square root of three over two. How many dollars did I get out of that one? Well, I'm kind of happy. That's good, good. Okay, 405 degrees. To make this angle, we start positive x-axis. And we have to rotate counterclockwise one time around is 360. And then how short, how much 360 plus 90 is going to be 450, but we're at 405. So it's over here. Which quadrant am I in? Quadrant one. Right, so to get to that angle, I've got to go all the way around this way to 360. 360 plus 90 was 450. So it's not going to be back up that far. It's going to be up a little bit here. So our 405 degree angle is in quadrant one. So all I've got to do to find what's left is take that lap of 360 degrees out. So 405 minus 360 
is 45 degrees. In quadrant one, everything's positive. So I've got the tangent of 45 degrees. The 45 degree line is the line y over x. Tangent is the slope of that line. What's the slope of the line? Uh, I'm sorry, tangent, that's the line y is equal to x. What is the slope of the line y is equal to x? So the tangent of that angle is one. But that's also where the sine and the cosine are the same. So that's how you remember that that one's going to be one, positive one. All right, where'd you find the 600 degree angle? Which quadrant? I've heard two different answers. Okay, so let's take out, I have to go around a circle one time. So 600 minus 360 leaves me, let me do it on paper. 600 minus 360 leaves me 240 degrees. So let's find out where 240 degrees is. This X axis is a positive 180. This would be a positive 270. So I vote that 240 degrees and 600 degrees are in quadrant three. So now look at the 240 degree angle. 240 degrees is a little bit more than 180. I'll mark them on the end of the terminal side. So the reference angle is this distance. How many degrees are there between those two? 60. So I want the sine of the secant of 60 degrees, but that's in quadrant three. Is the secant going to be a positive or negative number in quadrant three? Okay. So the secant is one over the cosine. So I'm going to keep my negative and put one over the cosine of 60 degrees. And now I'm going to go get the cosine of 60 degrees. Well, if the cosine of 30 degrees is squared to 3 over 2, then I already know the cosine of 60 degrees. Do you? Cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. So this number is 1 over 1 half. Negative 1 over 1 half, which simplifies to a negative 2. Is that okay? Did you get negative 2 out of that one? <coughs> So I'm making no dollars out of this. Well, you made dollars up there. I got some dollars up there. Do you have cash? Uh, yeah, Whoa. How about Venmo? Venmo work. You Venmo me. Where did I, where do, where do we go different? What is, what's going on with your thought process? I just got a little lost on it. So like, um, I didn't do, I just did like the 240. Uh -huh. How you minus that? I just went all the way around. I always take out as many 360s as I can. Otherwise, I get real dizzy. Right? So if it's a number bigger than 360, just start taking them out. All right, negative 225. So we're going to go backwards again. To get to negative 225, let's see, I got to go negative 90, negative 180. This would be negative 270. So negative 225 is going to be in here somewhere. That's going to be in quadrant three. Well, that's what I said, quadrant two. So don't listen to what I wrote or said. Listen to what I meant to write and say. All right, in quadrant two, is the cotangent going to be a positive number or a negative number? Cotangent is negative in quadrant two, only the sine and one over the cosine. Now, two, negative 225 degrees. And this angle is negative 180. Right, so how far apart are those? What do I have to add to 180 to get 225? 45, so 45 <laughs> degrees is my reference angle. Again, at 45 degrees, the sine and cosine are both the same number. 
because that's the line y is equal to x and here it's the line y is equal to negative x. So the cotangent, which is one over the tangent, tangent has the same number in its numerator and denominator, that should be a one. So here we get negative one out of this because we're in quadrant two. Okay. Yes. Oh, that's a good question. I would guess so, right? Because the other one's 60 and 30, there's no way it could end in a five. Good observation. I didn't even think that hard. He said that if, a, if an angle ends in five and has a nice reference angle, then if you do all your arithmetic correct, the reference angle should be a 45 degree angle. Yeah. Right, think of our angles, zero, 30, 45, 60, 90. None of those would have multiples that end in a five except the 45. Very good. Very good. I got room for one more on there. Let me take it a big old number. Let's find the sine of about 1,290 degrees. Sign of 1,290 degrees. So that's way bigger than 360. Start taking out as many 360s as you can <coughs> until you get an angle that's between zero and 360. Find what quadrant that's in, then get the reference angle, and then work that number out for your table. Anybody want to tell us what quadrant this one's in? Quadrant three. All right, let me start subtracting 360s. One, two, nine, zero minus 360. I get 930. Let's take out another one. Let's see. Five hundred and seventy. <laughs> so there's another three sixty in there. So let me move up here. Two hundred and ten. Now there's a number between zero and three sixty. And I agree that's in quadrant three because um the dividing line would be 180 degrees. The next dividing line is 270. So in quadrant three, you'd find an angle of measure 210. But that's not the reference angle. <laughs> the, the reference angle would be the difference between our angle of measure 210 degrees and our angle of measure 880 degrees. So what is the reference angle? 30 degrees. In quadrant three, is the sine positive or negative? I heard negative and I agree. Only the tangent and cotangent are positive there. The sine of 30 degrees, again, if I know the cosine of 30 degrees is square root of three over two, the sine of 30 degrees has to be a half. So this number is going to be a negative one half.
It's all good? So we're picking to do this backwards. I'm going to give you these numbers here and ask you for the reference angle. I'm going to give you the number in here and ask you for the reference angle, tell you what quadrant the angle's in, and then ask you for the particular angle. Okay? So put that car in reverse now. So let's, let's answer our question with positive angles. I want you to find all angles between zero and 360 degrees. And let's keep an open interval on 360 degrees. So that's one lap in the positive direction around the unit circle for which each of the following equations holds true. And so if I give you an equation where a trig function is equal to a positive number, then there are going to be two different angles that generate that. If I give you a trig function equals a negative number, there's also two different angles that give you that in one lap around the circle in the positive direction. Okay. So our first one. We're thinking backwards. What angles do I take the sine of to get a positive square root of two over two? So before you answer the question, in which two quadrants is that particular trig function a positive number? Sine is positive in quadrant one and quadrant two. Okay, so now think of the <laughs> angle in quadrant one. Sign of what angle gives you the square root of two over two? That's a 45 degree angle. Now what I want you to do is figure out what angle has 45 degrees as its reference angle in quadrant two. So in other words, in quadrant two, I need an angle that's 45 degrees away from the nearest X axis. <coughs> When 35, you're taking 180 minus 45. The nearest x-axis is 180 degrees. You have to back up 45 degrees to put you at 135. So the answers here are theta's 45 degrees and 135 degrees. Okay, I got another one for you. The second one, I want to know the two angles that I take the cosine of to get a negative one half. Cosine is a negative number in two quadrants. Which two quadrants? Two. Quadrant two and quadrant three. So the fact that this is negative means you've got to give me angles in quadrant two and quadrant three. So you're looking at your table in your head backwards. Here's the table in your head, which just happens to be on my paper. I go to the cosine column and I find a half and that occurs at a 60 degree angle. So 60 degrees is going to be my distance here. Cosine of 60 degrees is a half. So what I want you to do is figure out in quadrants two and three, what are the measures in positive values that have 60 degrees as the reference angle? Here's my x-axis to get in quadrant two, I have to back up 60 degrees. To get in quadrant three, I have to go forward 60 degrees. 
Got him? So you're at 180, back up 60 degrees. Where are we in quadrant two? 120. 180 minus 60. Okay, now in quadrant three, you're at 180. You have to go forward 60 degrees, 240. 180 plus 60. So here's quadrant two, I have to back up 60. And here's quadrant three, I have to go forward 60. Always using 180 as my angle. So 180 minus 60 gives us 120 degrees. Now to get this one, I take 180 plus 60 to give us 240 degrees. <clears throat> so there are two answers. Not too bad, huh? Because we got to peek at our table. Again, that's gonna be in your head, in your head and you gotta be kind of quick at it too, right? So that it's conversational where you don't have to think. Especially those of you who are going to be taking calculus when you finish this course. How many am I referring to in here? So your first week of calculus, that's the conversation. Hey, what's the sine of, uh, what's the cosine of 60 degrees? And so when I ask that question to my calculus students in the first week, most of them look away. They don't want to make eye contact with me. And I know what that means. I've got something on my face. No. <laughs> That means they're, they're nervous about their trig. I don't want any of you nervous about your trig. When I say, what's the cosine of 60 degrees? And it's half, right? So you have calculus? Yeah. So you might get you next year. If you've got some sort of jinx on you or something. <laughs> this will be a semester long class, right? I'm sorry? This is a semester long class. Yes. Semester long class in the end in December. Yes. And then it's goodbye. And you'll be stuffed full of trigonometry. Okay, sines and cosines are kind of easy. Let's go with a tangent. Okay, I need the two angles that I take the tangent of to get the square root of three over three. So you might have to recognize that the square root of three over three came from rationalizing one over root three. And one over root three came from dividing a sine over a cosine so that when you flipped and multiply, you were left with the root three on the bottom. Right? So this comes from something to get a square root of three over three, which is the same as one over square root of three, you'll have to have a square root of three over two down here and a one half up here. So that's the sine of the angle and that's the cosine of the angle. So sine of what angle is gonna give you a half? 30 degrees and just a quick check, cosine of 30 degrees is also square root of three over two. So our angle is 30 degrees. This is a positive number. So I can use 30 degrees as one of my values. All of the trig functions are in pos quadrant, hmm, positive in quadrant one. And in which other quadrant is the tangent going to be a positive number? Quadrant three. So use 30 degrees as your reference angle and get you into quadrant three. 180 plus 30. So that's quadrant one, that's quadrant three. So 30 degrees and 210 degrees.
got a chat question. Let me find my chat question. No notes during exams. It's all memorizing. That little table you got to memorize. All right. Let me just show you a quick way to memorize this table. I don't know if I showed it to you last time, but a quick memorization trick. So the angles in our table go from zero to 90 in increasing order from um, zero, 30, 45, 60, and then 90. So you've got to remember that. Then my next column has the sine of those angles and my next column has the cosine of those angles. To get the values in the table, I just start counting from zero down. Zero, one, two, three, four. And then I move over to the next column and count from zero up. Zero, one, two, three, four. That went too hard, was it? Now I'm gonna take the square root of those numbers. Next, I'm going to divide those numbers by two. And in the last step, I'm going to simplify. The square root of zero is zero. Zero divided by two is zero. The square root of one is one. So this simplifies to a half. The next two don't simplify. The values are square root of two over two and square root of three over two. Square root of four is two. Two divided by two simplifies to one. And so I have the same simplifying here. And there's the table for sine and cosine. And then to get tangent, you just take sine over cosine. Okay? So kind of memorize it. You can always draw that table real quickly on your on your tests or on your napkin or something if you're talking trig at a restaurant somewhere. Right. Is it time to go? Let me tell you a brief bit about what happens if one of the angles that we want to take the sine or cosine of are not one of the ones in our table, 30, 60, 45, 90. Those are the ones that have nice looking ordered pairs. The other ones don't. The other ones are going to be uh, irrational numbers that don't have uh, square root representations for them. Like if I want to find the sign of 19 degrees, that's not one that's in my table, but I know it's a number that's going to be between zero and say a half because it's smaller than 30 degrees. And the sign of 30 degrees is a half. So I get out my calculator. Well, on your calculator, there's a sine and cosine and probably even a tangent button. They have all six of them. Has all six of them? I don't, I don't have a calculator, so I don't know. You're not, but for future reference, we're not going to use calculators. But if you do things on a calculator, you have to make sure the calculator is agreeing with um, what we're working in. Currently, we're working in degrees. So you'll have to check your settings to make sure your calculator is in the degree mode. And then you would hit your sign of, what I say, 19 degrees. So you have to check the mode and things like that. We can, I can write down a trig function of one of the ones not in our table. And I can ask you things like, is this number going to be a positive number or a negative number? Is this number going to be bigger than a half? or smaller than a half. Without a calculator, you should be able to know those things based upon where that angle is in the plane and how it compares. You should be aware that sine of 30 degrees is a half, cosine of 60 degrees is a half. So you can answer those questions and that's what I'm going to get you to do in here next time. That'll be Tuesday, eh?
So what I need you to do is practice, 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 so that you know these values. And when I ask you the ones that are near them, you'll be able to tell me that'll be a positive number or a negative number. That'll be a number close to one, close to a half, close to negative one, close to negative a half, something like that. Okay, you'll be able to approximate it with the knowledge of these things that we did today. So I guess you're ready to go and have a great weekend? Yeah. yeah. Okay, get busy on your web. Some of you haven't even started any of the web works. Look on your syllabus, get logged in, buy the assignments, get on it. Don't blow those points off. I have a question. Yes. So when I have a turn this back to high school, can you use the answer corner? Can I, if I kind of like put that off and memorize it better, that like I don't know why, but the circle will be remember it better. Yeah. But and then when we start using pi two, are you ever going to use yes, it? We are. Yeah. Okay. When we get to the unit circle, we will go back to to radians. Okay. Um. So I want to take a calculus. Okay. They told me that I was. Are you architecture? Yeah, yeah, that's why they make you take this one. Yeah. And you're also going to have to take the analytical geometry. I tested out of it. They did? Good. Yeah. yeah. So you're stuck with me, just kind of okay. tutor the people around you. I mean, that's up to your advisor. I would say that you know enough, Jay, but they you, they want you to take it. Okay, thank you. Um, I just have a question on the web works. Like, it takes the highest score we make, right? Right. Correct. If you have a, if you if it gets you correct, then you're then you are correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That was it. I have a question about the web.